Hello and welcome to another edition of the Property Buyer and Sellers Podcast. Today we're talking about the elephant in the room, the Renters Rights Bill. It's coming and quite soon. What's it all about and what does it mean for you? Let's go through it one by one. Starting off with the headline, Section 21. This is the no fault eviction ground that's been used for many years now by landlords when they wish to get their property back at the end of the let because they're selling or because the tenant's unreliable or for another reason. The idea that landlords evict someone for no reason at all is frankly confusing. Why would a landlord want to get rid of a good tenant if they were paying the rent and not upsetting the neighbours? I can't see a reason why they would. However, no fault eviction is going and it's replaced by other grounds. So there are other reasons you can get your property back, but you can't get them back by Section 21 when the legislation takes effect. So point one, when will this legislation take effect? Uh, we're talking about probably the common consensus seems to be summer of next year, that's summer 2025. And the first big headline is, yes, Section 21, no fault eviction will be gone. However, there will be other grounds. You can evict your tenant for reasons of rent arrears still, you can evict them if you wish to sell the property or if you or a family member wishes to move in. However, there is a caveat and it's an important one. If you choose to evict your tenant under the ground that you wish to sell, you then cannot relet the property for 12 months. So you have to be very sure that the advice you've been given in terms of the price that you might ask for your property and might achieve is realistic. Because if it's not and you end up with an offer substantially lower, you'll have to balance that against the fact that you can no longer relet the property for another 12 months or nine months or whatever it is in the cycle after you've chosen to sell. So I think that's quite significant and confusing as well, because you'd think when there's a housing shortage, the government would want to encourage landlords back into the market. However, they're actually making it illegal for landlords to relet their properties once that notice is telling the tenant that you either wish to move in or you wish to sell for another 12 months, you will not be able to relet the property. So I think that's quite a big one. Periodic tenancies, it's the second thing. Tenancies will all be open-ended. So at the moment where we have assured short hold tenancies, read short hold, meaning that we can fix a term for six months or more, and that is a fixed term of tenancy. Under the new system, all tenancies will be open-ended, meaning that a tenant can serve you notice as a landlord by giving two months notice. The landlord, however, cannot serve notice on the tenant for the first 12 months of the tenancy for reasons of wanting the property back. So that's a significant change, but all tenancies will be open-ended and it will mean that assured short hold tenancies will disappear and they'll be replaced with assured tenancies. Does this mean you can't get your property back? No, 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 it doesn't. I think this is overstated. You will be able to get your property back but the grounds will be different. In most cases, you'll want to get it back because you want to sell it or you wish to move in. You can, of course, still serve under the ground that rent arrears is outstanding, but those grounds have changed slightly as well. Probably one of the bigger changes and something that hasn't been mentioned by many, but by a podcast I was listening to recently uh, by a solicitor who's a specialist in this subject, is the fact that if you ask for a rent increase, after the first 12 months, and you'll only be able to do it after the first 12 months, assuming uh, all things are equal, then when you ask for that rent increase, a tenant can appeal it as they can at the moment. But the difference is this, the tenant can then appeal it. And when they do, if they do appeal it, then immediately it will be referred to a first tier tribunal. And that tribunal will then adjudicate as to whether the new rent is a fair reflection of current market conditions. And if they find that it is a fair reflection, then they will say that the new rent is due from the point when they adjudicate, not from the point where you, the landlord, has asked for the rent. So it does create a market where it would be, frankly, crazy for a tenant not to dispute any rent increase because they will delay the implementation of that rent increase just by appealing. So we can expect a lot more appeals and no doubt a lot more specialists advising tenants on this subject and perhaps taking a cut of any win that they get from that. Um, holiday lets could be most affected. That's the other thing that was said and I thought was quite relevant. Imagine if you've got a holiday home in Dorset and you get peak money for it in July, August. There's nothing to stop anyone taking it, saying it's gonna be for a couple of years and actually flying the nest after two months of the sunshine. 
Um, so that could be a problem for those providing holiday accommodation. Not a problem for us here in Southwest London because we don't generally do that. Um, so all existing tenancies look like they're going to convert to periodic uh, on day one. So in other words, they will be open ended too, and these rules will apply to them too. There is a positive for landlords, and that is that the existing notice that tenants provide of one month is increased to a mandatory two months. So tenants will have to warn you and give you two months notice instead of one. Advanced rent payments will also be illegal. So that means that you can no longer take an upfront payment from a tenant where you're not sure about their financial circumstances. And this could be tricky for people, particularly those that are perhaps claiming benefits and landlords are trying to get some sort of uh, guarantee or assurance that things are going forward. And it could, in fact, deter the very landlords that they want to encourage into this sector. So that could be a big mistake. We'll see how that pans out. Um, also, if you want to bid your property up, that will no longer be an option. So for instance, if you set a rent of £2,000 per calendar month and you have 20 people apply, meaning you probably sent the rent a bit low, then you can't then take the highest offer above that amount. How will this manifest itself? Well, I think landlords would just ask a higher existing rent, frankly, and then perhaps be prepared to negotiate downwards, whereas before it would be the case of there could be bidding wars. Although it's quite rare, it does happen. So bidding wars will be banned, and that's part of the scheme as well. There'll be a new ombudsman, and all landlords will have to sign up to that ombudsman, whether or not they're part of a estate agency or not individual landlords will also have to sign up for this of course this has already been the case for many years for agencies so it doesn't really change anything much there'll be a property portal this property portal will be mandatory as a landlord you'll have to sign up to it i suspect it will be very similar to the current landlord licensing schemes the selective licensing schemes that are currently in place by boroughs locally here in southwest london such as merton and lambeth where you have to pay a fee and then upload certificates such as your gas safety, electrical safety, perhaps a PAT test, a floor plan, and an energy performance certificate, and a copy of the tenancy agreement. I suspect that government will charge for that service. Uh, how much, we don't know, but we can expect a fee coming there. But what about the local schemes? Isn't this an overlap, I hear you say? Yes, indeed it is. Do I think they'll therefore get a, do away with the local licensing schemes? It looks like they won't. It looks like both of those things will apply. So there'll be increased costs on landlords and no doubt this will effectively uh, increase rents in the medium term as costs for landlords go up as well. Um, people will have a right to pets. Tenants will have a right to take a pet. Uh, I do think there will be circumstances when landlords can refuse those pets, such as where a lease provides that you can't own a pet in a building. Uh, and sometimes it can be quite impractical in certain situations, but Landlords will not be able to use discretion on this. Tenants are quite able to have a pet and there's not much a landlord can do about it unless it's written into their lease. And even then it will be marginal. What you can do if a tenant discloses that they have a pet is insist on pet insurance. That's landlord's pet insurance, meaning that if the pet damages the property, then you will be covered by a separate insurance from your deposit. And I suspect many landlords will require this. Certainly we as an agency will be requiring this of all tenants going forward that have a pet but I think in many cases we try and provide that anyway so landlords pet insurance is going to become a very popular product as is the rent guarantee product I think um, because the one thing that comes out of this is it would take longer to evict your tenant we feel not because the grounds are much more onerous most of the things in there are frankly innocuous they're not too bad um, but I do think lots of landlords will be spooked by this so many changes in such a short amount of time and does it signal a direction of travel in terms of landlords? Are the good days behind us? Well, that's for you to decide. My view on it is that this will not reduce rents in any way. Rents will continue to climb. Many landlords will exit the sector. I do think we'll see more landlords exit than come into the sector, but the sector will still remain a valuable resource for those looking to perhaps supplement their pension or look at school fees for their children in the longer term. Because the one great thing about rents is they've always been a great hedge against inflation and that's not going to change. Although it may be, take a bit longer to get your rent increases in, they will still come and they will still be in line with inflation. And that's one of the great things about property. We can expect values to go up in line with inflation because they always do ultimately. And the same with rents. They always seem to go 
in line with or above the current inflation rate, protecting you, the investor, from the loss of money. Because we all know that if we've got cash in the bank and we leave it there, then it tends to go backwards because inflation erodes into the value of that money. So I still think buy to let will be a valuable resource. I think for many landlords that are currently self-managing, the plethora of new rules will mean that they decide to choose a managing agent rather than self-manage. And I think this will be prudent in most cases because you're gonna need protection from many of these things that are coming along and make sure that you're compliant on all fronts because the new ombudsman will be there and people will be looking for landlords to trip up and you need to make sure you're on the right side of that. But I think with good advice from the right professional agent and good protections in place, the new renter's rights bill will be an issue and it's one we need to be aware of. Here at James Alexander, we're really prepared for it. And if you need to discuss it further, then please do like, comment or share this video. You can always contact me, ken at jamesalexander.com. Be interested to hear your comments and we'll speak again soon. That's it for this special edition of the Property Buyer and Sellers podcast. I'm sorry if renting doesn't interest you as a buyer or seller, but it really should. My view is the net effect will be we will see some landlords selling uh, within the next six months because they just feel that it's all a bit too draconian. Personally, I don't feel that it's that bad. It certainly could have been a lot worse, but we'll see how it pans out on the ground. Thanks for watching. Ciao.